Hello there. I'm Dr. Purnendu Roy and I'm a surgeon in Genesis Hospital in Koshpa in Kolkata. I want to ask you something. Do you know what is the deadliest disease in the world? Well, if you haven't guessed it, it is CAD, CAD, coronary artery disease. And actually, 13% of all deaths in the world is due to coronary artery disease. It's occupying number one position. And instead of giving you statistics and relevance about Western world, Indian world, I can tell you that in India, it affects people much earlier. And I can also tell you that I would not have been sitting over here and doing this video unless I was just next to the hospital. I didn't even have chest pain. I just had symptoms, something like acidity. Luckily, I was rushed to the hospital and I had a 100% block of right coronary, had an angioplasty and now five years over and I'm fine. So today we want to understand what is coronary artery disease, how it can present, how will you understand, how to investigate and what's the way to prevent this and if it happens, what's the treatment. So let's first try and understand what is CAD, coronary artery disease. We all know the heart actually pumps and supplies blood to the whole body. But how does this heart, the muscles, how does it get the supply of blood? Three main arteries, right coronary artery, left coronary artery and left anterior descending. Now the lumen of the arteries gets narrowed due to deposition of cholesterol and these cholesterol deposits form sometimes plaques and when the lumen gets so narrowed that the blood doesn't reach to the muscles it is called ischemic heart disease like IHD or you get chest pain whenever the heart rate increases and if this plaque sometimes breaks or cracks over here by normal healing process platelets comes and gets deposited and causes obstruction or a plaque can get dislodged into the coronary artery and goes and gets blocked in completely stopping the blood supply to that muscle and that's what is called myocardial infarction or a heart attack this process of deposition of cholesterol and the plaque formation is called atherosclerosis. It actually takes place in majority of the arteries but when it does it in coronary arteries then you develop the symptoms of coronary artery disease. Symptoms. So how are you going to know when to suspect coronary artery disease or it's having its effect? The most important is you get severe left-sided chest pain and this is also called angina or angina pectoris. Pectoris is because in the pectoral area this area is called pectoral area. The pain is described as very compressive as if something is sitting on the chest as if a heavy stone is being put on the chest. This chest pain can go from the left shoulder radiating down the left arm it can have a pain in the jaw in the teeth and sometimes the pain is actually in the upper part of the belly and which may actually present as if it's gastritis or acidity and nothing to do with the chest there is also shortness of breath sometimes giddiness a fatigue now why these things happen now, many of you have probably realized that if you are running a race, if you walk for a long time and if your leg muscles don't get blood supply, you get cramps in your legs. That's a pain. In the same way, in situations like when your heart is working more than it normally does, which means you're climbing stairs, you're going to run to catch a bus, so your heart rate increases. The muscle has to work more and then it requires oxygen rich blood. How will the heart get the blood? Because the coronary arteries are narrowed, now not sufficient amount of oxygen rich blood is going there. And that's why the pain starts. And if this ischemia 
or the coronary artery disease affects the lower part, inferior side of the heart, the symptoms are more of actually abdominal in which you can get heartburn, you can get feeling of, you know, gas, distension, belching, or you can get sweats. Now the question is when to see a doctor. Now, if there is chest pain associated with sweats and you are not feeling right, don't try to treat yourself and don't try home remedies. You must immediately call for a doctor. There are many times what happens is the first one hour is the most crucial time after a myocardial infarction because otherwise the complications will arise. Now, the one which is usually always neglected is you take it for granted that these are acid peptic symptoms. You are getting heartburn and pain is actually in the upper part of the tummy. How can it be anything to do with heart? And you tend to take proton pump inhibitors and you tend to take antacids and that should not be. Any person who is a diabetic and gets a pain like this, you should always suspect because diabetics might not get severe pain. Their symptoms may be presenting as if it's an ulcer or an acid-related disorder. And it's also important that if you have any one of the risk factors of coronary artery disease, such as if you have got high blood pressure, if you are diabetic, if your lipid profile is bad, high cholesterol, and in case if you are a smoker, you are obese and you have a sedentary lifestyle and also there is a family history of heart disease, then slightest symptoms you should immediately get in touch with the doctor and not just treat it that okay, dekha jayega, we will see what happens. Among the sex incidents, the men are more prone to develop myocardial infarction and coronary artery disease. The reason is estrogen is cardioprotective. So as long as the ovarian functions are there, women are as a very low risk factor. But after menopause, they start developing sometimes coronary artery disease too. What about the age? You see, in our country in India, Incidence of heart attack is noticed at very early age, sometimes even in mid-20s. It's, it's surprising. So the process of atherosclerosis, which is the deposition of the cholesterol, starts very early. And there are certain papers which people say that what we used to say that you, we drink pure milk, pure cow's milk, buffalo milk, the recommendations from many of the pathology and autopsy studies is says that if you are drinking whole milk, the cholesterol deposition starts from childhood. So as the age increases, your coronary arteries are getting narrower. It's getting hardened. So if you are above the age of 40, recently I had a discussion with my friends that man, if there is one test you should do, to check whether how you are doing and that test should be check your coronaries because the coronaries will not give sometimes alarming signals it just happens and one incidence of an attack and that's it it's over nowadays many of us have started coining this term that coronary artery disease is a lifestyle disease lifestyle is the kind of life that we are leading one lack of exercise Two, we are ambitious, we work too much, increasing stress level. Number three, lack of adequate sleep. Number four, because of our work-life imbalance and all the time spending in work, unhealthy food habits. Number five, now we are not having fresh vegetables, fresh fruits. So all these lifestyle problems together, along with increase smoking many people feel this now that it's like a macho image that you smoke stress increases incidence of smoking too so all this together is increasing incidence of coronary artery disease 
an incidence of heart attack and death. There is another thing which many times we say, so and so, so peacefully died during sleep. Now many of us are not aware at all about this condition called OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, you can refer to another video of mine on don't ignore snoring. People who snore get a feel that they are having a lovely sleep. But this obstructive sleep apnea, actually people who snore in which during these phases, sometimes the breathing stops, which is called apnea. The oxygen saturation drops and that's the time heart has to pump even harder and faster. So people who snore and has obstructive sleep apnea has actually a higher chance of high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, dying of myocardial infarction during sleep or even stroke. The diagnosis of coronary artery disease and what are the tests to be done. Now, do you normally do a yearly checkup? Because everybody should go for once a year checkup because we check all other things except for our body and the mechanism. Now in that you will be able to understand your lipid situations, whether your triglycerides or cholesterol is high and if so, then food modification or medications. An ECG, electrocardiogram, which is the most basic thing, which will also show sometimes if there is any narrowing suggestive, because then there will be ischemia showing in the ECG. Echocardiogram, echocardiogram shows the mechanical situation of the pumping effect of the muscles, like the left ventricular ejection fraction. Then there is, if a person is not actually symptomatic, then sometimes we do a stress treadmill test, which is you're meant to run on a treadmill. By increasing the heart rate, we try to see that if the heart has to work harder, faster, in that case, whether there is any signs of ischemia. There is also CT angio, which CT angio is, it is in the form of a imaging. We are able to see the coronary artery. One can do an MR angio, and then we can also do calcium score level in the arterial wall, which also indicates how bad the plaque or the atherosclerosis is. And the next is actual coronary angiogram. Now there are definite indications in coronary angiogram. One can access the coronary artery either through your wrist in the radial artery or through the groin in the femoral artery. The advantage of doing a coronary angiogram is when you see that there is a narrowing, we can directly put in a stent over there to bypass the narrowing in that area and these stents are available in different types and also drug coated stents so that the stents don't get blocked. So now comes the management of. Now as I said that coronary artery disease is a lifestyle disease so lifestyle modification which means eat healthy and that is fresh vegetables, fresh fruits and there is a thing which is called Mediterranean diet, which is heart healthy. So Mediterranean diet is like a vegan diet with a lot of emphasis on plant proteins and vegan proteins. And along with that, add 30 minutes of walking or any other form of exercise. Now you should quit smoking in case if you are a smoker, uh, drink healthy drinks when i said then which means decrease alcohol consumption and uh, the best way to do that is eat healthy drink healthy and be happy now the disease is in the coronary artery the coronary artery has got narrowed so how to treat there are two options one is by angiography you can access inside the coronary artery Take the clot out, dilate the area and put a stent inside and that is coronary stenting. 
the other one is surgery one who is not fit multiple areas are blocked long segment of the coronary artery it cannot be stented that is called cabg coronary artery bypass grafting which is a surgery in the heart and in long time back we used to take venous graft from the leg and these veins were put in places of the artery which were blocked nowadays we are able to take the internal mammary artery which is called lima or rima left internal mammary artery or right internal mammary artery and these arterial grafts have got a longer patency rate compared to the veins so either angiogram and stenting or bypass surgery then you, your heart is regenerated like i have had my right coronary which was blocked two stents have been put in and after putting the stent i run half marathon in new town because heart is again new and pumping so well so now the thing is check your heart coronary artery status please get an appointment with the cardiologist in genesis hospital and if you want to create a heart friendly dietary chart visit our dietitians in genesis hospital and if you really enjoyed and feel that you got enriched with the knowledge about coronary artery disease like share and subscribe to my youtube channel if you're a new subscriber then you can get top star fan and you can avail my merchandising thank you very much for watching this keep watching